is Char and welcome to part 2 of the Splatoon 2 meta history. Today we're going to be talking about patch 2.0 through 2.3. If you haven't seen part 1 I'd highly recommend it as some of the changes that happened in those patches are going to be very influential for what happens here. And also I want to say that there is a bit of limited footage for patches at this time so I kind of had to look around quite a while and there isn't as much footage of the double weapon combinations I'll be talking about today. With that all being said, let's get started. Patch 2.0.0 was released on November 23rd, 2017. This patch would buff Tri-Slusher back to being 190p, but more importantly, the job of this patch is to nerf Burst Bombs. And the way they would do this is by making it so to get triple Burst Bomb, you would need to run two Pures of Sub Saver instead of the normal one Pure, making it so that triple Burst Bomb would be much less common. This would also come with some changes all around, but the other notable one would be Tenebrella, which would basically be given buffs to allow its shield launch to be faster and regenerate faster. This is basically where Tenebrella became more known for launching its shield instead of holding it out like regular Brella does. The first weapon becoming more common right now is Enzap. This is basically where Enzap became the primary support weapon for right now, as having double zap was pretty strong and zap was around 190p rather than the 200 it is now, which means it was really fast at getting armor, especially for the time. But the main reason you would see Zaps is to counter Forge. Now, why Forge? Forge was the first weapon to be able to do the infamous Bubble Blower combo, which was released a good bit before 2.0, but really started to take form now. Bubbles at this time were huge, and that just made the bubble combo even more deadly than it is now. And they also lasted a good bit longer than they do today. And while people weren't too good at it, as you can see by this footage, even with a little bit of special power, the bubbles are absolutely massive compared to how they are now. So having ink armor is one of the only counterplays to avoid dying to it at the time. We also got to see some more stingrays, normally in the form of V machines, which at the time ran special saver because people weren't aware of quick super jump, but also a little bit of heavies and chargers. Patch 2.1 would then follow very shortly after on December 12th, and this would mainly be a patch to adjust stages, which is where a lot of the stages lost their old field type and started to become a lot better designed. However, the big takeaway from this patch would be that Brellas would be nerfed a significant degree against Blasters and Chargers, cementing those classes as counters to it, and the normal Blaster would be 7 frames faster going into squid form after shooting, which would basically kickstart the next meta. The other reason we saw more zaps was Blaster. As you can tell, 7 frames is a pretty significant buff in terms of ending lag, so we started to see a lot more of the regular and custom blaster. Both of them were used since Splashdown wasn't cancelable at this time due to the latency bug it still had, and blaster with its reduced ending lag frame thing was overall pretty good. And since Zap was the only meta weapon right now that painted a ton since there was a good bit of forge and blaster and charger, it overall didn't have too heavy of a paint meta for blasters to be pushed out of the way. And this means we actually got to see a little bit of double zap and double blaster. So, Blaster players, I hope you enjoyed 2.1, because this, this is the best normal Blasters ever got. It's all downhill from here. Patch 2.2 would drop on January 16th, 2018, and this would have a few changes, mainly buffing some of the rollers, but the main thing would be the sloshers, which, very similar to the Blasters, got a buff in terms of being able to swim out of a slosh, this time by 4 frames instead of 7 for Blaster. Also notable is Heavy Swallowing getting its increased damage from 28 to 32. There were also some notable sub and special weapon changes. Splat Bomb and Suction Bomb had its outside radius reduced, so yes, the hitbox that's still ridiculous nowadays used to be even worse. And they toned down Bubble Blower by allowing opponents' attacks to do a little bit more damage to it, which ended up helping a lot at the time. Finally, in the points for specials, Zap would get its 210p and Forge would get its 200, therefore ending the Forge and Zap being big staples in the meta. As you can guess, this patch was filled with a good bit of double bucket. Slosher Deco was great since it was 190p and Baller was very good for comboing out of it. We saw a lot less of Zaps and Forge, but everything else was about the same. Blasters remained pretty common and didn't really fall off much due to their lack of nerfs, and we still saw a good bit more V-shots, especially with the nerfs to Zap. Outside of that, there was a lot of experimentation. There isn't too much to say, Double Bucket was pretty oppressive and pretty aggressive, but it was nothing too broken. This is the first patch where nothing really felt super extreme, since Bubble Blower got toned down. 2.3.0 would really just be home to some great buffs. Atree finally got its lack of jump RNG and a little bit more turfing, which finally allowed it to be used in the meta. On top of that, Tenet missiles were finally able to swim around. 
Yes, before this time, if you pop missile, you couldn't go into squid form and swimming around. This was a huge buff for the special. Points for special wise, Bucket Deco would get turned to 200p and they would finally take Tenetech off 230p. Overall, a pretty good patch. Nothing that really fixed anything super much in terms of broken weapons, but a lot of buffs to help other weapons. Kinda miss it to be honest. Unfortunately, not everything is meant to last, and we saw a lot of heavies filing. Back then, Heavy still painted about the same, but it was 180p for Ray, and Sprinkler painted super well, which means it was really great for spamming Ray. We even saw a good bit of double Heavy at this time. Now, some of you may know there's something I've neglected to mention about Ray up until this point. Not only did it have its insane damage and duration, but back then, you could just, you know, use it inside your spawn shield and be completely invincible. This is the main thing that made Ray so broken. There was literally no counterplay. It lasted forever, killed super fast, and people finally learned you can just jump to spawn and use it inside your spawn shield. This was probably the worst meta Splatoon 2's ever had. It was incredibly passive, but the main problem is on Tower and Rainmaker, if you didn't have the lead and the opponents had Ray, you just kind of lost the game. It was absolutely hell. And to wrap things up, we have 3.0, which would fix quite a lot of things. 3.0 would start with a huge change, one that was actually hidden in the bug fixes, which is making it so Splashdown wasn't really dependent on internet connection to take damage. Which basically meant, from this point forward, Splashdown is terrible and would get shot out of the sky. So goodbye Splashdown, it was a good run. On top of that, this is another patch where we got a great deal of buffs spread out across main weapons, something the game absolutely needed at the time. This is also where Sprinkler would start to get its rework, where it basically became unable to paint, but started to be a bit more durable. Yeah, this didn't really work out for the sub in the long run. And Stingray would finally get its first major nerf, reducing the damage per frame from 2.0 to 1.8, and making it so you can't use it inside your spawn barrier. This is far from the last change Stingray will need to get, as you can see on screen right now, but it is the start of Nintendo finally acknowledging this special is a problem. Finally, we got a good amount of gear changes and buffs, which would help gear diversity quite a bit, and this will end off by having Heavy Spiling be 200, and Bucket Deco being 220, and Regular Blaster being 190. And that is it for Patches 2.0s. A lot of this was really damage control for 1.0, and while Nintendo overbuffed a little bit, it was far less significant than it was in the early versions. 3.0s would be a time where the meta was much more stable, and Splatoon would finally get its reputation as a balanced game. To learn more about that and the Rock, Paper, Scissors meta, you'll have to take a look at next week's episode for Patch 3.0. I hope you're looking forward to it, and thank you so much for watching.